So this small change results in massive ball striking improvements. And what is it? And that's going from a left wrist that gradually cups in the downswing, so it gets more and more cupped as you move down, to a left wrist that either stays flat or gets more bowed and flexed as you move down. So making that small change to having that left wrist either stay flat or start to bow in the downswing will help with compression of the golf shot because it helps you rotate through the golf ball. Why does it help you rotate? Because the club face stays more stable, more square, and the club shaft will either remain shallow or it will get shallower with that bow moving in the downswing, which of course, both the compression which is going to result in more lean like we can see here is going to deal off the face which is going to help you hit the ball further and of course a little bit more stability of club face via the more rotation keeping that club face traveling on the arc and tracing it going through the golf ball whereas a left wrist that i see so commonly with players do where it gradually gets more and more cupped in that downswing will cause the shaft to steepen. It will also cause the shaft to maybe tip out in front of you with that steep shaft, which we can see here, resulting in a horrendous shank in this slow-mo here. But it will slow down your rate of rotation. Your body can also massively early extend to get the club to move back through the golf ball in a neutral path. But look at this front on here. Look at that wrist angle going through the golf ball. Disgusting, isn't it? I haven't got any, any lean at all. That cup has made me throw my loft at it. Not good at all. So let's talk about how to get that left wrist flatter and more bowed. So what we need to do, grab a tee, put the tee in the front side of your glove. Now, when we're at the top of the backswing, moving down into transition, what we want to do is either two things here. We want to either keep that tee flat on our wrist, so just lying flat there on the wrist and keep that there through the shot, or we want to create a little gap between the tee gradually in the downswing and the forearm. So you can see how that will move the left wrist into some bowing, keeping it flat will keep the left wrist flat. But if we do the opposite, we're going to know about it straight away. If we start to cup that left wrist, that T jabs right into our forearm. So we feel pain straight away. If you could do a drill that gives you a pain response, you're not gonna do that bad type of movement there where you're cupping the wrist because it's gonna hurt. So you're gonna do everything in your power, consciously and subconsciously, to prevent pain. So that's gonna mean keeping it flat or creating a little gap. That's gonna keep that club nice and shallow, keep that face nice and square, which is gonna help with better compression. Because why is that? Because it's gonna help you turn better through the golf ball, creating those better angles through the shot. So let's hit one here. So for me there, I was trying to create a little bit of space between the tee and the gloves. Do one more, a little bit of space between tee and glove. So I can either do that or keep it flat. Boom, really nice drill. I can repeat that over and over again and I'll get this into my swing. So after you've done a lot of that drill to replicate this a little bit without it, so you could say out in the golf course, really feel like those knuckles on your left hand are curling down towards the ground, curling those knuckles down. So that is gonna get that left wrist into some bowing. But if you're someone who really struggles with that cupping, gaining that cup in the downswing, which is a lot of golfers, that feeling of the curling knuckles down, it may just keep your left wrist flat if you really suffer from a left wrist cupping. So it's an extreme feel but that will get you into a better position with that left wrist. It's gonna have all these implications to club face, club shaft and rotation. So curling these knuckles towards the ground. And I'll tell you what, it results in some really, really good feeling ball striking. So guys, a simple change will make a huge difference. We know golf is a game of very small margins. I see this movement with my students on skillist all the time getting into great positions at the top and then they start extending and cupping that left wrist in the downswing killing the good work they've done so really make sure you do this we'll see loads of top door players moving into some form of flexion or bowing in the downswing so you'll be in good company doing it so if you enjoyed this video of course click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this hit the subscribe button hit the bell button too to be notified every time i put out a video so make sure you do this you're going to be getting that club in a better position